81. What is the name of the person to whom Jesus was first reincarnated? Father, the Father, the Father, the Father. 82. Was Satan to be bound then? Satan was to be bound in part. 83. When was the head of Satan taken off? 1453. 84. By whom? By Muhammad. 85. Name some of the marks that were put upon the moors of Northwest by the European nations in 1774. Nero, Black, Ethiopian. 86. What is meant by the word Negro? Negro is the name given to the river in West Africa by the moors because it contains black water. 87. What is meant by the word Black? Black, according to science, means death. 88. What does the word color mean? Color means anything that has the pain, stain, varnish, or die. 89. What does Ethiopia mean? Ethiopia means something to the body. 90. Can a man be a Negro, black, colored, or Ethiopian? No. 91. Why? Because man is made in the image of that light, like the star of God. 92. What title does Satan give himself? God. 93. Will you define the word white? White, white means purity, purity means God, and God means the rule of the land. 94. To whom do you refer at times as being a great God? Allah. Uh, 95. Is the devil made in the image and after the likeness of Allah? No, he is a shadow of our Lord, so it will pass away. 96. Who made the devil? Elohim. 97. Who is Elohim? Elohim is of the seven great spirits who created everything that was, is, and evermore to be. 98. What is Elohim sometimes called? The seven eyes of Allah. 99. How many days are in a circle? Seven days. 100. How many days are in a creation? Seven days. 101. How many days are in? According to science, how many days in a year? Seven, Seven days. Islam. 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 I would like to call to the altar at the moment. Um, Assistant Grand Sheik. <laughs> Clifford Jefferson Albay. Islam. 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 Islam, 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 Islam. I'm going to ask you praise to the great Father God of Allah, orchestrator of all the seven planes of existence. I be honored to the Prophet Nubu Jali, founder of the Moors Science of America, and of the Moors Divine and Natural Principles. I give honor to my grand sheep, the Lord Nature El Bay. I give honor to Chairwoman Sheikh's Nika Atum El Bay, Bay, part of self. I give honor to the Muftis on staff. I give honor to all the brothers and sisters here, all the brothers and sisters online who are trying to get understanding of what it is that we are called to do. Islam, 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 Islam. Peace, Morris. How are you feeling today? Great, brother. Oh, that's peace. That's peace. It's always truly an honor to be in the house of the great creator. Because truly we could be somewhere else. We need a standard for our lives, don't we, Mo? Islam. Islam. So, what better standard can we have than that of the prophet? Now we understand that being placed in these roles, we understand that you got two positions. Now we understand that prophet brought us civics. Why? Because civics was needed to tell us about ourselves. You see, back in the days when our ancestors were, were subject to slavery, we didn't have this type of civics that we are trying to establish today. So back then they had what they called uh, master and servant. Today they're called master and subject which has the same roles. But I'll, I'm just going to get a pivotal point. Since the Sheik is wearing the one-on-ones for the most children, and I just want to go over a couple of them, because they're pertinent to the issue that we are subject to today. First one, who made you? Allah. Allah. We know that Allah made us because we know that Allah is the creator of the universe. Another word for universe is what? Called heaven, right? Yes, so we know that Allah was the creator of the boundless universe, also called heaven. Now we know that in scripture says, heaven now a place of meets and bounds. We are all created, we make our own. So I too say who is Allah, it says Allah is the father of the universe. Three say, can we see him? No. He says no. Why? Because we can't see him in the heart. I mean we can't see him, we have to see him in the heart. But we know that the heart is based off two selves. What are the two selves? High, High self and lower self. Because our force is where it's near the place we can meet him. It says it's in the heart. Cry. Who is Nubu Jali? He is Allah's prophet. 
6. What is a prophet? A prophet is a dog alive manifested in the flesh. 7. What is the duty of a prophet? To save the nations from the wrath of Allah. How did the prophet do us? How did the prophet set on saving the nations from the wrath of Allah? By teaching them how to be themselves. How, do the prophet, how did the prophet teach us by being ourselves? By showing us our two self, which is what? Higher self and lower self. I eight. Who is the founder of the moral scientific America? No, 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 no. None. What did was the moral scientific America founded? 1913 AD. Where? No, New, New Jersey. Jersey. Where was Nova Jolly born? The state of North Carolina. What is the nationality? Morris America. Okay. What is your nationality? Morris America. Okay. Why are we Morris Americans? Because we are descendants of Moroccans and born in America. Yeah, it's long. So we understand when the prophet established the Morris Scientific America. He was bringing in these rules, such as master and servant, master and subject. But um, I'm going to read from the chapter from the Holy Quran, chapter 7, the eye on master and servant. Why? Because it actually sets the standard for master and subject. So give me a second, let me find it. Islam? Islam. Islam. All those who have their own Quran can turn to chapter page 46. And the chapter is 20, uh, 28, chapter 28. And you know, I'll just follow along. It says, 1. Repent, repent, repent not, O man, at the state of servitude. It is the appointment of, it is the, it is the appointment of Allah. And have made advantages. It removes thee from cares and solicitudes in life. The honor of a servant is his fidelity. His highest virtues are submission and obedience. Be patient, therefore, under the reproofs of thy master. And when he rebukes thee, answer not again. The silence of thy resignation shall not be forgotten. Be studious of his interests. Be diligent in his affairs. And faithful to the trust which he reposes into thee. Thy time and thy labor belongs unto him. To follow him not there, for he payeth thee for them. And thou who art a master, be just to thy servant. If thou expectest from him fidelity, and reasonable in thy command, if thou expectest ready obedience. The spirit of a man is in him. Separate and regard may create fear, but it can never command love. Mix kindness is with reproof and reason with authority. So should our ambitions take place in, that, in his heart, and his duty should become his pleasure. He should serve thee faithfully from the motives of gratitude. He should obey thee cheerfully from the principles of love. And fell thou not in return to give his judges and fidelity <coughs> their proper reward. Islam? Islam. <coughs> Prophet said, they who, credit, they who gave you credit rely upon his honor. The, the withholding the withhold his due is both mean and unjust. Islam. The Prophet gave us the knowledge of ourselves about who we are. And he told me how to high and lower self. Why? Because by him showing our high and lower self was impertinent to chapter 31 when the chapter talked about the peace inside and depends upon justice for the individual and the safe enjoyment of all his possessions. Well, we understand that in the society that we live today, in this mundane world, it's not, a, it's not a reflection of what the prophet was talking about in chapter 31, during the first chapter. But it does reflect everything he said within that chapter of what not to do in that society. See, this is the reason why we have checks and balances. I just read a chapter on master and servant. We understand that these two roles are important for peace to maintain. So as we read in the chapter, it, it spoke about, uh, 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 about knowing the responsibilities of both, the master and the servant. Because if the master didn't uh, respect the wishes of the servant, and the servant didn't respect the wishes of the master, then that society could not run. Because it's up to the servants to, 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 to be studious to the master, 
to flood whatever it is that he wanted for that society. But see, back then, the other brother were called master and servant. See, a servant is not a bad thing. A servant is a good measure because it teaches one how to humble himself. But see, to the students of the world, they took the, 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 the true meaning of what servant really means. Why? Because as servants, we are, serv we are a servant, and as masters, we are servants. Because the servants is, 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 is taking care or, 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 or doing the wishes of the master as well as the master doing the wishes of the servant. Because if the servant didn't understand what the master was trying to do, then you have a problem. That's the reason we have our Article 1 in the Divine Constitution Bylaw. It says the grand the chairman of the more scientific America is the power to make laws with the system of the prophet and the grand body of the more scientific America. The sister grand secret, the sister grand secret in all affairs is lived according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, and is known for the members of the more scientific America. See, there we see the, the role as master and servant, subject and master, servant and master and servant. Why? Because these roles are important. See, these roles doesn't just play out in our everyday society. These roles doesn't just play out in our church, in our synagogue, in our mazits. These, these roles often play out in, 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 in every other uh, aspect of our lives. Not just in our society, but in the animal society, in the kingdom society. Because it's based off checks and balances. Each one knowing their role to make the society function the way it's supposed to. But see, I give honor to the Prophet Nobu Jali because in, in the Moral Sky, in the opening statement, he reads, in regard to the Moral Sky of America, the Prophet said, All authority and power of the Moral Sky of America is vested in the Prophet Nobu Jali, and whom he appoints to act as the Supreme Body. The Prophet has the authority and power to expel any officer or member of the Moral Sky of America who willfully violates and refuses to comply with the rules in regard to the branch. Parts up. Regards to the branch more scientific or American and such suspensions and exposures should stand until the judgment of the prophet. The members and the officers should have made satisfactory atonement. All officers and members of the more scientific or America and any such rules and regulations of the, of, of the Constitution shall be in writing and not at variance with any laws of the city, town, or nation which the prophet should declare a law. See, this is our master. This is our master who, who, who gave us a magistrate. Because the more scientific America, whether you believe it or not, is a government. It's a government because it's based off national principles. See, when you look at the society that we, as Negro, Blacks, and Colors, are subject to, when being in our little state, we realize that we were subject to that government. The government that, that, that were not of our own. We understand that they had checks and balances, rules and regulations, master and servant. But see, they were the masters and we were the servants. But see now, there's a problem with that picture though because the peace in society depends on that, but ain't no peace in society. Because the masters not, they're not for the riches of the servants. Why? Because they took the definition of what a true servant really is and switched it. Now the servant is one who's been subject to anything that the, 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 the citizens can bestow upon him which are a violation to what a free republic is supposed to be responsible. See, the United States of America is a free, is a free, uh, 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 is a free society of free people. But in order to, to demonstrate the, the principles of a free society, you must understand those roles, such as magistrate and subject, master and servant. Why? Because the peace depends upon that. See, I was living out in the mundane world, we didn't have these structures. We didn't have these rules and regulations. But see, the more all praises be to the more scientific America that was founded by the Prophet Nubu Jali. Why? Because it's told, our, it's told, our, told us about ourselves. It told us how to conduct our society. It told us how to conduct our households. By, by instituting uh, 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 the precept that he talked about, master and subject, master servant. See, these roles can be applied to anything. Because these are the checks and balances that are needed for peace to maintain. But see, when we were under the, 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 the name Nibbles, Blacks, Cubs, and Ethiopian, our character was not synonymous with the roles of magic, magic and subject, master and servant, or what they were truly meant to be. See, when they, were, when they gave a definition of magic and subject and master and servant, the way they wanted to be, they became subject to that. 
See, no Chinese brought them home. He said, the government can only be expressed by the two habits of the territory. See, as Negroes, Blacks, and Colored Ethiopian, we could not manifest the wish that no Chinese wanted for the more scientific America, which was that society that the prophet talked about. <laughs> <clears throat> See, we must understand that the prophet said he comes to redeem us from mental slavery, which we now have. He comes to show us that the day we were practicing were contrary to that peace that the prophet talked about. So in order for us to, to, to take all the roles since that service up to the master, he had to teach us ourselves, which was higher self and lower self. What's the higher self? The mother of virtues, the home on his life, and breathe justice, mercy, love, and right. When you look at those virtues, why would you not want society to run off that? See, this is what needed for our magistrates or rulers to be running our government. They need that, those principles of our mother. But see, that's missing. The problem is that we're, we're practicing uh, 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 carnal concepts of really ideas of men. Why? Because they take the woman out of her role. We understand the woman represents the feminine principle. She's the gate. She's the opener. So she represents love. But without justice, there can be no love. So that's why Jesus represents justice, but Mary represents that love. It represents the love that brings forth justice. But see, we, we in our own state can understand that. So when Allah spoke, he spoke to man. So he had to bring another demonstration of that love, because we weren't looking to the woman for the love. So he had to manifest it in John. Part of so, he represented it in Jesus. But Jesus, John represents the purity that manifests that love. See, we didn't understand that because we have a lower self. We have a full associate that we know to sit. So through the teaching that the prophet Luke Jelly brought us through, which is learning the high and lower self, we learned to understand that love through the purity that manifested, through, through, through dealing with what it is that we're supposed to deal with. See, I give honor to the more side to America because the prophet said he had suffered for this understanding what this movement was dedicated to. So he instituted the laws and rules and regulations. What he, what, what, what he meant when he did that? He had to check it because remember, law. Law is, 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 is vague. You got all kinds of laws. You got the jury law and you got color law. So the prophet had to be specific when we least out the principle for the more scientific America. Because we have a lot of deagles out there that serve on for the redemption process for the so-called Native Americans in North America. They said they placed their trust in issues of names formed by their forefathers. See, the remedy that provided for us under these misnomers is actually doing more harm than good. Why? Because it goes right back to the same person who enslaved us. Promises they place their trust in names and issues formed by their forefathers. So no Johnny gave us back our national descent names that detailed what birth, birth by nationality represented. Because one's identity determines one legal standard in that law. So if you came to be a part of a, a nation, you must have a free you must have a free national name to be recognized as American citizen by this nation which is the uh, United States of America Republic. But see, under Negroes, Black, and Colored Ethiopian, you are colored citizens. You only subject to the 14th Amendment, which is the colorable jurisdiction. It was created for your downfall. See, the, the, the principles of master the subject and master the subject are in there. Because the master is doing this thing, and, it's, and the servants are doing whatever the masters want. The master is not even looking out for the so-called servant. So when you look at that, look at the same conditions we suffered through slavery. When we were uh, 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 so-called uh, in enslaved ships. Look at what we were suffering. Not just on the ship, but on the land as well. When they had us back, when they had our ancestors back on the plantations. They were servants. They were servants. But the master was not looking out for them. Why? Because he was concerned about his own wealth. See, that's not the peace in society that the prophet was talking about. See, because I'm pretty sure those masters wasn't out there doing a hard back breaking work that those servants were doing. They wasn't out in the field uh, 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 picking cotton, farming, and doing all those things. They were sitting back uh, uh, enjoying the pleasures of this world while they put their fathers towards joy after death. Joy, joy after death. The peace is society depends upon justice. So Jesus came to demonstrate that justice. Show the role between master and subject. And master and servant. Because without those two roles, there will be no peace. Pop said, We are one family bearing one free national name. Bearing one free national name. Within those names, those principles of a free national republic are disguised in that. Because all people are free. Possibly. 
But Prophet Shor distinctly said all those fell through the fact that they are not the tradition and custom of their forefathers. But they're servants. But they're not treated as equally as a servant is supposed to be. Because I know if I had a servant, my livelihood depends upon that. If I know I want to eat good, if I know I want to have productive in society, I got to take care of them. Because as soon as they rebel, there's a problem. And see, this is what's going to happen in this world today. The so-called citizens are going to be forced to make changes. When they realize that they've been bamboozled, when they realize that all they've been taught was about what was, was covered, they're going to rebel. The peace in society will not be there. Why? Because they've been lied to. But who, 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 who problem was that? It's not their problem. It was our problem. Because ignorance of the law is no excuse. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. As a citizen, you should know what it means to be a true citizen. See, we're one around claiming to be a citizen, but citizens of what? We're claiming to be following the law, but what law? We're claiming to be servants, but servants of what? We're claiming to be masters, but masters of what? So we need to be specific, because all law is specific. So Nobu Jali tailored it. He gave it to you where a baby can understand it. So I give honor to Nobu Nobu Jali. I give honor to the more science of America. I give honor to the roles of master and servant, master and subject. Because this is how we receive confer. This is how we this is how we go as a unit, as a family, together. The process of together we stand, the body we fall. That consists of the roles of master and servant, master and subject. But see, the role is which we stand together but divide amongst ourselves because the servants who supposed to be for the benefit of the masters are being left out of the picture. So, let's do as the prophet said, take our place amongst the fairs of men by helping to lift the nation of the more scientific America based off the more divine national principle. And with that, I say Islam. 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 Next speaker would be that of Grand Sheikh Lord Nisha El Bey, part of so. The next speaker would be that of Chief Nika Atum El Bey. Islam. And come to exercise our purpose according to the moral, divine, and national principle. Islam. 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 To our great Father God, Allah, the author, the creator, the governor of the universe, of the worlds, who have instituted laws for the governments of the world, that we may abide and become a part of. I give honor to his noble my prophet, Prophet Nova Jali, his forerunner in these days, Marcus Messiah Garvey. I give honor to the Grand Sheik here, Grand Sheik Lord Nova Nature Abe, all Grand Sheik, Chairmen, officials of the Morris Science Temple of America. Islam. 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 Doing anything else, but I'm here, and the reason why I'm here is because I have faith in a prophet's redemption process. It's the reason why I'm here, and I understand that the more minds gravitate and focus on the same idea or thought, the greater that thought becomes. This is why it's important for us to have um, clean mind. The prophet says, keep your bodies clean with water and keep your thoughts pure as well. You know, because if your thoughts are pure, then the, the way the universe works is as what you put out in the universe comes back to you. Everyone has different names, what they call it, call it karma, we call it whatever. But what you put out, reap what you sow, whatever you put out in your mind will manifest on a physical level. And you may not know it manifested, but it will manifest on a physical level. And so that we have to keep our minds pure and our bodies clean with water. And so all of our minds being focused on the same thought, intent, on the same day, same hour, brings power, brings force um, to 
the actual thought itself. So I'm here trying to get a better understanding, clarity of who I am. Because um, the prophet says, man must know thyself. We must know that our creator, Father God of law. Uh, that's when you are really becoming to fruition, when you know who you are and who your creator is. You know, then you understand better your higher self. You know, when you know that you and your Father God of law is one. And the Morris Science Temple of America is instituted and organized by the Prophet Nova Drali and founded by the Prophet Nova Drali in 1913 AD for the purpose of teaching his people to learn to love instead of hate again. Was one. There's many facets and um, look, look, think of it as a tree, you know, with many branches and many leaves that spring forth from it and fruit that it bears. You know, we can look at more Science Temple of America as a tree with riparian complexions, which can be the branches. And we, all of us who proclaim our free national name, we are those fruits. You know, we can think of it in that sense. And with the more Science Temple being a riparian complexion, it teaches us many things. You know, how to become better citizens, um, how to learn to love instead of hate, you know and many other things. And this is a program instituted for all Asiatics, because the prophet is a universal prophet. He came to redeem man himself. He's a universal prophet, and his teachings are universal. Love is universal. Truth is universal. Peace is universal. Freedom is universal. Justice is universal. And they're necessary for nations to strive peacefully. Peacefully. We all have gods, and we say that God who we call Allah, many other nations may call him by different names, but have instituted governments so that we can live in harmony, peace together. Okay. Because the peace in society depended upon justice. Justice. You know. So those things is needed for people to be able to live in harmony, even though they may have different perspectives, perspectives and languages and thoughts and ideas. They should be all pivot about love and the five principles should be universal. Islam. Islam. And I just want to go into chapter 7 briefly and um, demonstrate just uh, to begin the Okay. I want to do a little more trivia today. I think I'm going to hold off on that um, until um, a different day. Um, I'm just going to go into it a little bit and begin my lesson with why is truth and falsehood conjoined in man? Um, pose that question, if not, I'll continue. Um, why is truth and falsehood conjoined in man? And the reason why is because man is the breath made flesh. Now, when you describe or try to get an understanding of what that breath is, or to describe the breath, the breath is holy. Mm -hmm. You know, describe is simply asking, is like an adjective to describe. So, adjective describes a noun, describes a thing. So, the breath is could be that noun, and to describe it would be holy. Is holy breath. So. Truth and falsehood is conjoined in man because man is the breath, holy breath, made flesh. And we know that holy breath is truth. We know that truth is Allah. Okay. So man is a spirit and a part of Allah. Man cannot pass away because all things that pertain to Allah cannot pass away. They're considered infinite. Finite things are those things that pass away, which is falsehood. Mm -hmm. Truth is infinite. It cannot pass away. This is why um, it says that when man knows his higher self, he knows the things that cannot pass away. And when man knows the lower self, he knows the illusions of the world. He so. knows all the things that will pass away. So. You know your higher self. You know, you know Allah. Allah cannot pass away. Mm -hmm. So man is truth and falsehood strangely mixed. Our goal is to make that lower self go down 
So man can strive and become one with his father God Allah through his higher self. Islam. 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 So with man being truth and false is strangely mixed, we got some things to deal with. You know, we have foes, we have lessons to learn. The creation of all of man tells us that man is weak. He's weak because he debased himself, he has fallen, he's become dense, and he is not vibrating on those spiritual levels and degrees as he should be. So the falsehood that we're dealing with is lowest of traits. That's the falsehood. And with the falsehood and lowest of that we have, is what's causing conflict within ourselves, amongst our, our fellow um, citizens, amongst our peers, amongst society and its whole, because it's based on the law of self-actions. And you read what you sow, so if you think it negative, you put out negative actions, then you are going to be violated unjustly, without due cause or just cause. That's all. That's all. So we have to be humble and not strive, because man is striving towards perfection, striving to be righteous, striving to be his higher self, striving to unfold in what a more really is. But we have to understand in that unfoldment, as we strive, there are still lower self tendencies that we also have to throw off. And because we're not completely unfolding to our higher self, there are going to be negative situations and things that we're going to have to still strive and become the strength of men, the strength of Allah may manifest as a test and to show our strength or our weakness. Islam? Islam. 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 So with this falsehood that we have, there's many, I don't care what organization you're a part of, you know, there's infiltration, there's no, no one is perfect in regards of what organization you're a part of. But specifically talking in regards to the Moran Science Temple of America, I want to go into the Prophet um, Governor's Order Tree Proclamation at each meeting. And I just want to delve into what the Prophet's really saying here. Because a lot of times when we read something, especially if it's something negative, we tend to not to like to apply it to ourselves, no. like it's everyone but us. Mm -hmm. And that, no, we're not a part of that problem. But we are. The prophet, the prophet said the Negro problem is our problem and can it only be solved as it can. And we have to understand that we are still a part of that Negro problem. Mm -hmm. Islam? Islam. Islam. We are for love, truth, peace, and freedom. And when these principles are violated, justice then must take its course. Any member, a group of members, who hold malicious feelings toward the temple or the prophet, or violate the divine covenant of the Moorish movement will receive the reward from Allah for their unjust deeds. Islam? Islam. So I'm going to go back down chapter 7 a little bit here. Because we have to remember who our creator is, that we do have a higher power above us. And the prophet says in chapter 7, he says, and he asked the mosque, he says, what do you say of power? And Jesus said, it is a manifest. It's the result of force. It is but not. It is illusion. Nothing more. Force changes not. But power changes as the ethers change. Force is the will of Allah and is omnipotent. Mm -hmm. And power is that will and manifest directed by the holy breath, directed by the breath. There is a power in the winds, it's a power in the waves, a power in the lightning strokes, a power in the human arm, a power in the eye. Now I'm gonna stop there. Because when he's saying that there's a power in these things, we tend to look at these things as being a force within itself. And they are not. There is something that instructs it, instructs it to do as it does. So. A power in the winds, a power in the waves. So that power is what? 
There's an illusion. It's not. Nothing more. So the honor itself should not be given to the wave or the wind because it's just manifest of power. So force is the will of Allah. Okay. And so let's apply it to ourselves. Because really anything that we do is of our own will. Really of our rarely of our I'm sorry, rarely of our own will. And we know that this movement is being is being willed by the Creator. Now Allah is leading on and destiny is sure. And we know that this movement is in the hands and being being instructed by the Prophet Mabujra Ali. He even instructs and tells us he can better fight this fight on the soul plane. And for us not to forget where the seat of power rests. Mm -hmm. The seat of power. Mm -hmm. Because he is the force of this movement. It's not? It's not. Okay. So with us being come and being able to call ourselves Moorish Americans here in these lands, I understand the degrees of, of us being God. I understand the degrees of sovereignty. But it is because of the Prophet Nobujur Ali, he has forced attention to these ideas to make it possible for us to proclaim ourselves as Moorish American. He is the force of this movement, not us. So. We are the vehicles to do the work that he instructs us to do. Therefore, he laid down laws, divine constitutional bylaws for us to imitate the Prophet in word, in speech, mm -hmm. in actions, all these words are synonymous. Mm -hmm. But the prophet is God in this movement. He is the force of this movement. Mm -hmm. He said that he knows where every member is along the way. And the reason why I want to talk about this particular paragraph here, it says, any member, group of members who hold malicious feelings toward the temple or the prophet or violate the divine covenant of the Moorish movement will receive the reward from Allah for the unjust deeds. Now, I didn't say this. I didn't make this up. This is something that we all are bound to. This is a proclamation that every Moorish American, whoever's sitting at a meeting that's not proclaimed, is supposed to hear. So if you can define for me malice, only because malice is the root for malicious. So if you look up malicious, it's only going to bring you to malice. That's the root. So, malice. Bad quality. Badness. Wogery. From bad. Mm -hmm. One, extreme enmity of heart or malvinous. Malvinous. Mm -hmm. A disposition to injure others without cause. Mm -hmm. From mere personal gratification or from a spirit of revenge, unprovoked malignity or spite. Mm -hmm. Two, in law, a deliberate intention to do evil, a willfully formed design to vex, annoy, or injure another person, with or without personal ill, will or without just cause or excuse, mm -hmm. a wanton disregard of the rights of others, Malice of forethought or 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 mm -hmm. Malice previously entertained as in a deliberate design or purpose to do a wicked or evil deed. Mm -hmm. Synonyms: rancor, spite, grudge, pecute, malevolent, malignity, hatred. Malice to regard with extreme ill will. Islam. Islam. The only reason why I want to focus on this is because he's directing this directly to any member or group of members. Okay, so that can pertain to us. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't know your lower self. You may not think it pertains to you. But this is for us to be able to look within and examine with care our two selves. 
uh, hire some more stuff. So let's focus on this here because it was important enough for the prophet to put it in a proclamation for it to be read to each oh. member. Okay. So also, it says malice in a Black's Law Dictionary. A condition of the mind which shows a heart regardless of social duty and fatally bent on mischief the existence of which is inferred from acts committed or words spoken. Islam? Islam. Islam. Okay. A condition of the mind which shows a heart regardless of social duty and fatally bent on mischief. The existence of which is inferred from acts committed or words spoken. So any member or group of members who hold malicious feelings toward the temple or the prophet or violate the divine covenant of the Moorish movement, which is a social duty, will receive the reward from Allah for the unjust deeds. Mm -hmm. So here within the Moorish Science Temple of America, our divine covenant, our divine constitutional bylaws are our duties here as members, specifically. All true Moors will and must obey the law as laid down to them by their prophet. And if they lose confidence in their prophet, they should turn in a card button, see square in a turban fez, and return to the state where I, the prophet, found you. Islam? Islam. So let's just examine what care Moors, our intent, because they are those who come into this movement the sole purpose with malice intent. That's a lawful, that's a lawful that's a lawful charge. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we want to charge, you know, police officers or what have you for, for, malicious, for being malicious or malice. Mm -hmm. But we have to understand also and remember here, because we are obligated to the Constitution and the respects of this government here as Moorish Americans, mm -hmm. the Moorish movement, that we don't violate the same laws that we charge others outside this movement for violating the Constitution of the United States of America, we have to also be part and parcel to that as well. So let's keep that in mind and not, you know, not be so puffed up in our own conceit to think that, okay, this is not talking about us because whenever we violate any of the laws, whether it's in willful intent or not, it's causing harm to this movement. It's not? It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. Um, that concludes my lesson. Anyone have any questions? It's not. It's not. Um, I know the Quran says, we are perfect from the seed from which we came. And um, not yet in full, but we're able to manifest into the fullness of what we're supposed to. But then the prophet also, and then it, it gives you an example when it speaks about Jesus being, you know, told in a room about men when and, and Mary was taught about Jesus the days to, to raise Jesus to who he was supposed to become. But then you, you read further on it in another chapter, the prophet spoke about said from from the from the womb of my mother will be virus and waving, from the loans of our father being inherited our instability. So dealing with what you what you talked about, <coughs> where did the confusion come in? Because we know that when Jesus was being demonstrated, he was on the right track because he he represents love. And we understand that John represents purity, but he said from in this era of time now, we inherited the instability from our, we were various and waiting from our mothers, and we were we inherited instability from our father. So, where did we go off track? Can you can you explain where did we lost the connection between the true mother and father, which we were supposed to get those principles from? Because, because I our, our mothers and fathers weren't true. It weren't true. It's not. You know, keep in mind. Um, for me, if I'm understanding your question correctly, uh, Jesus was ordained to be a prophet first of all, so. and Mary was, she was ordained to be a mother of a long promised That's son. Right. All right. So we all know that we all manifest in a form that is suitable for our growth. So our mothers and fathers weren't on that level. So. I mean, at one time, we were all very spiritual and, and obeyed the laws of the Creator. Mm -hmm. But just as we all fell, we debased ourselves from our law. This is why we even here on this plane in the first place. That's right. We debased ourselves from common thoughts and deeds. That's right. You know, so it, I guess it just goes back to mm -hmm. uh, the principles your mother and father instilled in you, taught you, and what level degree they were on. I'm doing that. That's right.
you know, because if you were raised into a family that had that nature, then more than likely you would have been also of a productive right. seed right. already. So. so this is why it's so difficult for all of us. All of us are here with the same issues because most of our parents weren't on a level, so. which makes it harder for us to get to that degree because we have to teach ourselves, whereas Jesus was being taught already All by right. his mother. Um, He'd have to teach himself because he already had it within him. He was ordained. Mm -hmm. He was a seed. So. It was already planted in him to unfold into what he was. So. But he had help because he had these teachings and he was taught. It wasn't until a certain age where Jesus was able to go out and teach on his own mm -hmm. at the age of 12. So. You know, it's because he was complete. At the age of 12, most of us is, we have no idea who we are. We're still playing video games. Mm -hmm. You know, so perhaps if our parents were already on that degree, because remember, the first school starts in a womb. Yes, no. That's where it really began. So we were taught within a womb. Then by the time we got to the age of 12, we will also be able to be able to teach and be on a higher level than we are now. Yes, no. But it's all in the raising and yes, no. in the nature. Yes, no. Yes, no. Very well. Yes, no. Yes, no. Yes, no. All right. I would like to call to the altar at this moment, Grand Sheep, Lord, Noble Nature of it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um. to our illustrious prophet of the Asiatic nation of North America, Prophet Noble Drew Ali, give honors to all active Asiatics trying to restore the heritage of man. Islam? Islam. Islam. <coughs> honor to all loyal, faithful Moors. Honors to you. All officers of the Moor Science Temple of America, give Islam. honors to the Charter of the Moors of the National Movement, Moors Science Temple of America. Give an honors to all its viewers, the MST online, give an honors to the Moors children, give an special honors to Sheikh Nika Ibatum El Bey. Islam? Yes, Islam. Give an honors where honors do. Islam, you may be seated. Islam. Give honors to those who came before me, paving the way for my lesson. So. I'll ask you to just be patient with me because I have a lot on my mind right now. And I have some things to go over with you that you might not like. Some might disagree with me for even going over certain information. But the record says, act as thy soul dictates, and the end shall be happy. So to be content with myself, I don't think I need to go over this because I'm throwing it out in the ethers. It's not just for you, it's for all of us. I'm going to give you some brief excerpts out of the uh, some previous letters that was written by the Prophet Nobu Ali first. And it's going to lay the groundwork for where I'm going. <coughs> this is a letter written in 1929. Excuse me. And the key point I'm going to focus on it says notify. The prophet was going to Detroit, and he wrote, I would like to know some good, decent place to stay, because I am not going to stop at any of the former addresses. I don't think it's safe. 
notify faithful Moors in order to save their labor of their Moors' work in Detroit Temple. They will have to watch their enemies and hold their enemies in check. It said, works alone proves a man to either be good or evil. It was through my hard labor, labor and my finance that built Detroit on a prosperous footing. And I'm sorry to find out that I had found unloyalty to our Moorish laws and obligations. For it layeth not in the members, but in the heads whom I have trusted and supported. I have everything to tell you when I get there. That's one letter. Another letter, December 27, 1928. This is a, a, a letter to Brother Lomax Beck, written from the Prophet Noah Gerard Lee. It says, Dear Brother, be very careful of propaganda and news that you hear. There is a certain movement from the churches to destroy our movement and dishonor me, and that have, and that have been paid both by Europeans and Asiatics and any outside letter that you receive let me know the message that I will know that you are more and a favor favorable more we Moors must stand in unit we we stand together according to deeds and actions and not by words or lip or lips so it's long The purpose I am going over these letters is because reality is all there is only one more science temple of America. And that temple is not necessarily the physical institution that has the name or has a charter on the wall referred to as the more science temple of America. We need to be clear about that because there have been different movements that have resurrected throughout the history of this movement. So every movement that has the name Moorish in front of, front of it does not necessarily mean it's the Moorish Divine and National Movement that was ordained by Allah. Back to Sheikah's Nikah's lesson. Allah ordained Noble Jew Ali to establish this movement here for the redemption of man on earth. Islam. Specifically the ones that was held by the iron hand oppression of the Asiatic of the Asiatic nation of North America. The ones, the Moors who have been branded Negro, Black, and Colors. So therefore that Allah ordained Noble Jew Ali to come fix that problem. That's the movement that we are, we are chartered by the Prophet Nobu Drew Ali, the Moors Divine and National Movement, Moors Science Temple of America. Not any other movement that you see. There's been movements in the past when the Prophet was informed where he said there's different movements that's arising. People even within the movement were setting up their own movement to destroy the movement that was laid down. Islam. Where the Prophet says the true foundation which has been laid by me Yes. So Moors was already coming up with insidious plans to tear, tear down and drag out the movement back then. This is when the prophet was informed. We got to realize that the issues we see today is not a current issue. That's not just arising from some people who want to do separate things. You only can know who's who by the works, the actions, and the deeds. The prophet told the Moors that back then when he was informed. Mm -hmm. They don't, you know, forget what you hear. There's a lot of propaganda out there. You know who's who through their works, not through their words and lips. That's not how you tell if somebody's a Moor Science Temple or someone's a Moorish American or someone's a faithful Moor. We are Moors by descent. 
But we're talking about people who follow the prophet in the movement. We're not just talking about people of Moore's descent. That's we're right. all of Moore's descent. Everybody on the planet is of Moore's descent. You want to be technical. But we're not talking about that. The movement is not pertaining to anyone of Moore's descent. So, I want to go into the death certificate of the Prophet Nova Drew Ali. And with the death certificate of the Prophet Nova Drew Ali, the Prophet had infiltrators in the movement when he was informed. He had men's in charge and women's in charge to carry out certain acts on behalf of the movement. The treasury, the prophet said, without a grand treasury, there's nothing. So there was people put in the seats of treasury to undermine the movement and to squander finance. You also had, the prophet had an attorney, a, a, a attorney who was supposed to be a proclaimed Moorish American to deal with legal affairs of the Moor Science Temple of America by the name of Aaron Payne L. Treasure, the treasurer turned on the prophet at one point. The attorney turned on the prophet at one, at one point. And there were, there were other people who also uh, had insidious plans. But one of the proofs, because we don't want to falsely accuse anybody, but I'm going to just lay these facts down and show you proof and writing. All the works that the prophet had did during his, his physical tarry here. We got letters from the governor, the president, the secretary of state, local businesses, city council, the, the congressmen, all writing the prophet Noble Jali in correspondence, we call it. We have those letters. We have signatures, ETC. And it was published not only in the Moorish newspaper, but it was also published in the Chicago Defender and the other Chicago local newspapers at that time. So that's a fact. That's a fact that he corresponded with governmental officials. He went to the Pan American Conference. He led the Moors in two national parades, one in Chicago and one in New York. A lot of people don't know about that. The prophet put the Moors on the map. Islam. Mm -hmm. The prophet was invited to the inauguration of the governor of, of Chicago. That's in writing. The president, the prophet endorsed the president, Wilson. He also sent letters and communication to different temples telling them who to vote for. And they voted in a national consensus to endorse certain things. That's in writing. So the reason why I'm saying this, and through all of this communication, every governmental official referred to the prophet as Prophet Noble Drew Ali. No one referred to him as Timothy Drew or Mr. Drew. But when a prophet left form, the Moors that was in charge of the services put a death certificate under the name Timothy Drew. Mm -hmm. mm. After all the work that he did mm -hmm. to raise them from their Negro, Black, and Colored state, yeah. they didn't have the decency to fight. Now we know it's not all just the Moors doing it. wasn't their, you know, it wasn't their will to do it, but we know that they had turbulence. They had obstacles just like you have obstacles right now where they don't want to honor certain things on a government level if it's not done in writing and this and that. But the, the prophet already was established. Mm -hmm. So even if someone or some clerk or some printer wanted to give an issue, you had enough morals at that time and enough proof to challenge the jurisdiction thereof. But instead, they allow the death certificate to be printed under the name Timothy Drew. And then he was buried under the name Timothy Drew. 
on his tombstone read Timothy Drew. Now that's a problem. It's not. It's not a problem anymore because it took some more and, and you know genius citizens to come along years later and go back and correct those issues. So I mean it's corrected now. He's buried in Burke Oak Cemetery in Chicago, Illinois. I mean it's you got a beautiful tombstone. But what I'm saying is it wasn't the organic tombstone and, and death certificate. Moors had to go back later and correct that. So the issue I'm bringing it up is because you need to know the, the administration of Moors at that time to understand what's going on now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go over this death certificate. Under color and race, they got here American black. No such national name or race. Even at that time. So I'm just showing you what they got here. We're dealing with the original birth certificate. Death certificate, I'm sorry. Under occupation, they put prophet. They acknowledged that he was a prophet. Birthplace is unknown. City or town is unknown, I should say. State, they do have North Carolina. Name of father, unknown. Birthplace of father, unknown. Mate and name of mother, unknown. Yes, I know. Mother unknown. Hmm. Informant Aaron Payne. That's your problem right there. The informant was the attorney. Hmm. But he was supposed to be a Moorish brother. In the temple, he was Aaron Payne out. Yeah, that's it. But under his because he's a magistrate. I mean, not a magistrate, but an officer of the court. Mm -hmm. Practice law. So he showed his true affiliations when, it, when the prophet left for him mm -hmm. and went back and did his real job. He wore two hats. Mm -hmm. So he's the one that had the power of attorney on behalf of the prophet. That was one of the big issues that arose around that time. That's why things was going down during that time. So the power of attorney is the one who actually put the death certificate together. And not only did he didn't acknowledge the prophet's free national name, he didn't even acknowledge his. Islam. And okay, we got infiltrators, we know that, that exists. Mm -hmm. My issue is the Moors did not stand up and challenge that. Now, yes, the, the man might have had legal power of attorney or whatever to do whatever he did, sign from the prophet. So it makes it hard for somebody to really come behind that and, and change it. Don't get me wrong, but it was done. It was later done. Moors fought until it got done. They went back to that cemetery, they went back to that state, and they challenged the jurisdiction. See, you got to realize that if you don't challenge certain things, people are not just going to volunteer to do things. You're in a position to defend your nationality and the birthright. You have to fight for this. This is not something that's just given to you and that you, you don't have to stand and it's the own defense. You have to preserve it. To preserve it, that means that you have to strengthen it. You have to have a defense system behind this whole movement. If they challenge the prophet, you think they're not going to challenge you?
And we have too many people sitting in these seats that don't want to challenge anything. This is why this was done. Don't want to challenge. Don't want to rock the boat. It's a contradiction to teach people their nationality and their birthright and you don't do what it takes to defend it. Just like the prophet says, if that's the case, you need to take turn in your card and button and, and cease wearing the turban of feathers and return back to the state where he found you. Swamp. Wow. Yes, it's a good movement to be in for different reasons. Don't get me wrong. But you can't enjoy any of the highest spiritualities of life if your nationality and birthright is not honored. That is the first key to this. We have to get it honored. It exists. It has been restored. But we have to fight to preserve it. All members must do what? Preserve these holy and divine laws. Because all members are what? If you are part and parcel of this government, it can only be acknowledged through true citizenship, notwithstanding the 14th Amendment or any other colorful code or so-called law that's enacted thereof. Your citizenship, your part and parcel is only through the prophets, the prophet declaring you a nation. Outside of that, you have no citizenship. Acknowledge citizenship. True citizenship. And you know where I'm going. We know that, but I want to make sure everybody else out there knows that. Outside of Moorish American, you have no true wealth that they're going to honor. Because they look at you or view you as being brought into the constitutional fold via the 14th Amendment. That's your due process clause. Mm -hmm. That's your citizenship clause. That's your civil right clause. Outside of that, they don't. They say you can't even go. You can't predate that. They're saying you can't predate that. It confuses them when you go pr prior to those dates. You just put a monkey wrench in law when you start going to the organic constitution, or you start talking about something other than the Fourteenth Amendment. Mm -hmm. It that causes confusion. Not meaning that we shouldn't do it because it causes confusion. Meaning that it causes confusion to them because they don't understand. Some of them do, some of them don't. But it, that's what confusion means. Confusion don't necessarily mean that it's, it's wrong or something is wrong. But as soon as you stir something up, that causes confusion. True or false. You know, Moore's always saying, you know, stop flashing your cars. It causes confusion. Well... You know, they use things sometimes in the wrong content. Yes, we shouldn't just flash our cars. That's not what it's about either. But just because somebody disagrees with you don't mean you're causing confusion mm -hmm. and you're wrong for that. Mm -hmm. Some confusion needs to be done. Mm -hmm. The prophet caused confusion, mm -hmm. if you want to get technical, and what he did. His whole movement caused confusion. Mm -hmm. Muhammad caused confusion. Mm -hmm. According to our record, it says Rome had peace for a long time, right? Mm -hmm. Until what? Until Muhammad the first came upon the scene mm -hmm. and fulfilled the works of Jesus and Nazareth. So, he caused confusion. If, if Rome had peace and he came to break up their peace, is he wrong for that? No. Yeah. It wasn't the peace that you think it is, so you can't always just read things word for word and, and run with it. You gotta understand what's being said to you. He wouldn't be saying that for nothing. Yeah. If Muhammad was wrong, then that means the prophet was wrong. Because the prophet is Muhammad. And that means Jesus was wrong too, and all the prophets was wrong. 
It's not, bro. You got your hand up. Hey, no. just sit on my I'm sitting and thinking for you. No, I'm call bro. Up. He's all events, bro. Let no. me move on. So, going back to this death certificate. So, they got him as an informant. So, he informed the state on something that took place. He told the state that this man who passed was Timothy Drew. Error in law. Yes, Error in law. As soon as Moore has seen that go down, they should have been down there marching and, 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 and doing whatever they had to do. I'm not going to fault them because I don't necessarily know the whole situation behind that. But what I'm saying is Moors did go back later and correct that and I give honor to those Moors. And more than people might say, well, you know, we don't follow them and we don't like with them more. They went back and did something that nobody else did. I'm not justifying all the other acts they did after that. I don't know exactly what they did after that. But what I'm saying is I'm honoring what they did. We give honor where honor is due. And one of those acts they did was right. And we sure. give it honor to that. Because if not, that tombstone will still read to this day, Timothy Drew. And the same thing with you. If, if you don't fight for this, mm -hmm. then you and your babies might might be the same thing. That's how deep this is. There's more right now this, this, this uh, buried under the reflection of a European slavehold name. Under Negro, Black, and Color. Right now. More have been in the temple all their life. Mm -hmm. Because their present day leadership might not have dealt with that. Because they say what? They don't deal with law. Then they say profit didn't deal with law. <laughs> but we got addresses where he dealt with the inaugurations and, and all this other stuff, but they say he didn't deal with law. Mm. He went to the League of Nations, but he didn't deal with law. Mm. Pan American Conference, but he didn't deal with law. Mm. <laughs> See, if you're not careful, your own brothers will put you back in slavery. It's slow. Sometimes we point the finger in the wrong direction. Yes. Yes, um, um, How did the Moors, if we have any knowledge, defend, since they, because what they did was denationalize the military all over again by him selling them out by putting the name down as Timothy Drew. So how did the, once the prophet transformed left the scene, how did the Moors combat or, or rebut that, uh, you mean um, the process that took? The process. Well, we're not going into the process right now. We're just dealing with the, the issue at hand. Okay, I don't have the illegal process what they did. So, you know, let's keep this along the lines of dealing with the problem and the solution. Because I'm only going over this to show you, to bring you to a point of understanding that there was infiltration back then and why you see infiltration now and how to deal with that infiltration now. That's really where, where I'm coming from right now. Brother Osman, did you have a hand up in your stretch? Uh, no, I did, but uh, I, I was going to ask you, uh, do, do you know the most that when Jim made the correction? Uh, but, uh, but I don't have that available at this time. Okay. All right, move on. Any other questions before I move on? Mm -hmm. Now, the newspapers, once again, through, throughout Chicago around that time, you know, all gave honor. And when they wrote about the, the write-up of the, the, the funeral service and stuff, they all honored Noble Drew Ali, Prophet Noble Drew Ali. Mm -hmm. The whole city knew him as Prophet Noble Drew Ali. Here's one clip in here. Pictures and everything. Hundreds of Chicagoans attend the funeral last week at Noble Drew Ali, founder of the Moore Science Temple, who died at his home after a long illness. Services was held from the Pythian Temple, and the prophet was buried at Bear Oak Cemetery. It says, Attorney Payne Hill. I'm sorry, let me bring that back. It says, Attorney Aaron Payne. 
It says Ali wearing the gloves at the left. Let me, let me bring that back. Attorney Aaron Payne Ali is what it says. Wearing white gloves at the left becomes the new head of the society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The informant became the new head of the society. Now he didn't really become that, but that's what the headline said because that's what some people were pushing. So it's not like he really became the head where all the moors agreed to that. You know, it's issues that happened with that. You understand? So there's a lot of things that, that went on during this time. And, and, and it has to help you understand why there was a split. You know, there's other letters that the prophet wrote to Millie L. When he made reference to, you know, a lot of people want to sit where I sit. A lot of people going to want to sit where you sit because that's where the seat of power is at. That's where the money's at. ETT. So they're going to try to undermine the seat to try to get control of the movement. We have that in letters as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we can't just necessarily deal with the issues of, of what happened back then, but you, don't, you need to understand the groundwork behind it to know who's who. So if they, people start talking about certain sides, it's not really about any side. I don't even get into any sides of the Moor side. There are no sides. Mm -hmm. It's the Moor Science Temple under the guidance of, of Prophet Noble Jewel Ali. Are you a member of that or are you not? Yes. And you really don't have to tell me if you know answer the question because I know through your works, actions, and your deeds. Mm -hmm. So if, if you really understand this movement, you don't have to ask nobody what side they're on mm -hmm. or what temple number they're a part of. You can do just for you know for communication purposes and other things. There's, there's you know. That's valid on other levels. But I mean, as soon as you start asking questions and your question is only to discredit one, then that means you're a part of the, the, uh, the problem as well. Mm -hmm. It's wrong. It's malice. Mm -hmm. Malice is wrong. You're just as wrong as the other one. That's a malice intent. It's that's wrong. Right. And that's a person with insidious plans. Regardless if you understand what happened, some people don't know what happened, but it don't make them right because they don't know, because ignorance of the law is no excuse. Yeah. So if you're ignorant towards this movement, there's no excuse for that. You don't have to know everything about the movement, but if you know, be careful. You know, don't falsely accuse your brother. Know what you're talking about. You make an accusation, know what you talk about. Yeah. Know what you're talking about. headline here from the Moorish God. Prophet spirit route enemies from the temple. <laughs> A lot of sides. A lot of things went down. What's the time she could say? Shalom. I'm going to go into magistrate and subject. Slow. How to hold the wrong. Chapter I'm going to explain how this chapter relates to exactly what the lesson is about today. This is why a lot of these letters the prophet wrote was an order to be read to the temple. Because of the, like he said, some of the situations that was arising from the temple. Back to the proclamation, the governor's order to read proclamation. He said, watch your enemies, dear Moors. Your enemies are the ones to speak against your temple. Mm -hmm. 
and your prophet and ridicule him to the fullest. Yes. So once again, you gotta understand something. It's not that doesn't necessarily mean mean people that's not in the Moor Science Temple that speaks against the Moor Science Temple, but it does include them. But it also means people who uses the name Moor Science Temple and still speak against the prophet. That means them too. So people think just because they got a nationality card in their pocket and they pay their dues, they think they safe when these when these orders are being read. Or when a prophet is speaking, they you know, they sit there and they, they don't even look at it as they talk he's talking to them too. They think they're immune from that. No one's immune no one's immune from it. Only one the only time you're immune from it is if you follow the law. In spirit. But people who speak against the prophet in the temple. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna just lay this down because just because this movement has been tampered with does not mean that we abandon our obligation to it. It's love. And that's how you know who's a true woman. Because if your house is tore up, you don't leave the house and you don't burn it down. You do what it takes to clean it up, to fix it up, to reconstruct it. Same thing with your body. If you're sick, you just don't commit suicide. You just don't wish to be somebody else. You don't go start a new body. You have to heal yourself. It's love. So it's the same thing with the Moor Science Temple. Because you, you're spiritually a part of this. So if the temple is weak, if it's ill, then you have to heal it. So you got people out there who speak against the Moor Science Temple because of the condition and the history it went through. And then they say, well, that's, not, well, that's why they're not a part of it. They're, they're just as guilty as the ones who did the dirt to it. It's long. So I said, some people might not like where I'm about to go with it. Demonstrate. But it is going. this is going to expose everybody. If I'm not right within this, then this exposes me too. It's long. But people got to stop playing games with this temple and stop juggling it around. The prophet said, I brought you something that you can't tear up. It'll tear you up. If you understood that spiritually, you would know that really there's nothing wrong with it. And it's doing what it's doing according to law. It's going to separate people. It's going to expose people. It's going to remove people. But the prophet said that he knows the people among the ranks that are interested. He knows who's interested in this movement. He said they are the vanguards of this movement. As the van, the Moors' hordes increase here in America, all Moors are active and not passive. Oh. Moors by descent, I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about being Moors by descent. I'm talking about being a vanguard of this movement right now. Outside of this particular movement that was lawfully chartered, there is no true citizenship. There is no Moorish American. It's not. In, in, in the recognition of the law, in the eyes of the law. I'm not talking about what exists. What predated this 50,000 years are not going there. We don't want to mix words up and mix thoughts up. I'm talking about what's lawfully recognized. And we tear the prophet's movement down if we sit there and agree and acknowledge people and, and movements that are unconstitutional. Just because someone might mention the name Prophet Nova Jawali or put them in their literature or put them in their book 
and say that they're repping or vanguard and for the noble Jewali, if they're not following his laws, then they're not a vanguard of the prophet noble Jewali. So, you need to know who's who. You know who follows him if they follow his law. He instructed people who were teaching a group of Moors on how to teach a group of Moors. What to say when you teach a group of Moors. What terminology to use. So if people are not using that, then you can't say that they, you know, it doesn't mean that they're not a Moor. It just means that they are not following the prophet in his movement. If you follow the prophet in the movement, then you don't have a, any other choice but to follow what he laid down. It's long. Because what he laid down is the true redemption process. True redemption. To redeem man. Go back to the front cover for a minute. What does it say on this front cover down here at the bottom? Uh, to back redeem back. man. From his sinful and fallen state of humanity back to his highest pen of life as his father got alive. The scripture says, the prophet Jesus says that it's the duty of every man to restore the heritage of man. Yeah. That's what Noble Drew was doing. Restoring the heritage of the Asiatics of North America. He restored their heritage. What does heritage mean? Without even going into the dictionary, the one word you should recognize in there is her. Mother. <laughs> her. To inherit. Her. Mother. Woman. So he's holding her up on the front cover of the questionnaire. Fallen humanity. Humanity has fallen. He said humanity must be lifted. It must be lifted. There's only one way to do this. There's only one way. Just like we fund COINTELPRO and different organizations to drag down the movement, we fund our own people to do the same thing. Not knowing the COINTELPRO exists through a lot of different Moorish organizations. So you don't, you know, people don't talk about that one. They tell you how Cohen Telpro came in the Moore Science Temple, but they don't speak about how Cohen Telpro is also in other Moorish organizations. They're not just in the temple. The prophets also said, what can do good can also do harm. Our mission here is to protect the prophet in the movement. If we're wrong in our approach, if we're missing something, then we plead to people to help us. Did you come up with anything different? Then? Yes, heritage. Islam. Um, in civil law, every species of immovable, which can be the subject of property, such as lands, houses, Orchards, woods, marshes, ponds, etc. Whatever mode they may have been acquired, either by descent or purchase. That's one. I don't think that's a reference to what you're speaking about. Well, that's, that's illegal. That's, that's, it's related. It is. It's definitely related, but that's going into more chattel. Mm -hmm. And they let you know that, that still the, the heirs of the people are still chattel. What about hereditary, hereditary succession? No, we don't need to go into that. I mean, it's basically what, what I said. No. So with, with heritage, they did say um, ETC? It's not. That's why we said it is related. Yeah. <coughs> it is related. Mm -hmm. I'm a magistrate and subject. Holy Command of Moore Science Temple of America, Chapter 29, Magistrate and Subject. And I want you to look up the term magistrate from the place. 
They are the favorite of heaven, whom the sons of men, thy equals, have agreed to raise to sovereign power and set as a ruler over themselves. You're speaking about a Republican form of government here. The favorite of heaven, whom thy sons of men, thy equals, have agreed to raise to sovereign power. See, the people who hold seats in government, under the Republican form of government, that is, are raised to that title or that degree through their equals, which are the citizens. Mm -hmm. The citizens agree to raise someone to sovereign power. The president just don't become president because he wants to. Technically, the people are supposed to elect him to become president. But we know that that's been some been tampering going on with that. But technically, the law says, I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is what the law says. So I'm, I'm showing you the similarities to chapter 29 in our Constitution mm -hmm. of the United States of America. The free one. We have agreed to raise to sovereign power and set as a ruler over themselves. Consider the ends and importance of their trust. Far more than the dignity and the height of thy station. Thou art, thou art clothed in purple and seated on a throne. The crown of majesty invested thy temples. The scepter of power is placed in thy hands. But not for thyself were these ensigns given. Not, not meant for thy own, but for the good of the kingdom. Same thing, that's not just here in the temple. That's also dealing with the seats of government once again. The people in government and the seats of government are not put there just for themselves. They're put there for the good of others. They're put there for the good of the kingdom. We don't use the term kingdom anymore. But now we're going to use the word country because that's what the modern day terminology is. Mm -hmm. The glory of a king is the welfare of his people. His power and dominion rest on the hearts of his subjects. Hmm. So now you go right back into the prophet. What I'm saying is, the, re the way you tell who's a prophet, or even who's a leader, mm -hmm. who's a grand sheik, who's an emir, who's an emperor or empress, whatever title they choose to use, then you still measure them by this chapter here. If they say they're president, okay? Well, the glory of a president is the welfare of his people. Wow. So it should be likewise. The glory of a king or the glory of a grand sheep should be the welfare of his people. It's slow. His power and dominion rest on the hearts of his subjects. Everybody comes to this movement because of something on them. They got issues, good or bad. This is why people come. Our general issue that we have is we've been branded Negro, Black, and Colored. That's the general one that we all share. Other things after that might start being different on why we actually come here. But that should be the interest of the leader. Same thing when you deal with the president, you know, in his state of address. His state of address is... is Taylor, very nice. Because what it has to do is he's trying to touch your heart. He's trying to let you know that he's here for you. Or she's here for you. They're here to deal with your particular needs, your wants, your inconveniences, your oppression. Whatever your issues are, they're coming here to deal with it. So what did Obama and them start dealing with when he you know, was coming in? He dealt with the health issues. Father, not health physically, but the health plan issues. Health care plan. The tax issues. They all start talking about the tax. Because general, when you're talking about the general laws, those are the main things that people commonly share in common. So in order for you to elect somebody, you have to they have to be able to tell you that they're going to address the main concerns you have. 
If he just came in and said, well, I'm not going to do this. I don't even worry about me doing that. I'm not. I'm gonna raise the taxes on you. You ain't gonna have no control of that. If they told you everything they're not gonna do, then you're not gonna let them. Am I right? It's no. The mind of a great prince is exalted with the grandeur of his situation. He evolved it high things, and searcheth for business worthy of his power. So. He called together the wise men of his kingdom. He consulted among them with freedom, and heareth their opinions of them all. He looketh among his people with discernment. He discovered, discovered the abilities of men, and employed them according to their merits. His magistrates are just, his ministers are wise, and the favorite of his bosom deceive him not. What you have in a magistrate? It's love. Magistrate. Person clothed with power as a public civil officer. A public officer belonging to the civil organization of a state and invested with powers and functions which may be either judicial, legislative, or ex executive. But the term is commonly used in a narrow sense to designate and is commonly used in a narrow sense designated in England. A person entrusted with the commission of I'm sorry, with commission of peace, and in America, one of the class of inferior judicial officers, such as the justice of the peace and police justice, and police justice. Let's stop. Let's stop there. So we know in the judicial system, the magistrate is pertaining to an officer of the court, mm -hmm. one, but one who's entrusted with official authority. Mm -hmm. So it's not just any officer of the court. But magistrate, not only in the judicial system, it, it could be any civic organization or civil organization. Mm -hmm. More size Temple of America has magistrates. Grand Sheik is a magistrate. Doesn't mean negative as an inferior individual or kangaroo individual. Mm -hmm. It just means officer of that particular jurisdiction or court. More size Temple is a court too. Mm -hmm. Sister Grand Sheik is also a magistrate in the jurisdiction of Moore Science Temple. Chairman is a magistrate. Mm -hmm. Anybody with official authority that sits in seats is, is also a magistrate. So. so, according to the literature, his magistrates are just. So anybody who's a magistrate, that means that they're invested with some type of trust. That means that they have a, a fiduciary obligation. So. To be impartial, to be just. So now, they're held to Moore's code of conduct and official code, constitutional code of, of, of conduct more so than the average member. So anybody who's claiming to be an officer or in any seat of authority is supposed to be just. They should be dealing with the scales of labor. They should be dealing with law because that's their position is not put there for anything else. So as soon as somebody start talking about they clothed with this authority and they got ranked to do this, that, and the third, then you measure them, measure them not just by the Constitution, but also by this chapter here. So. That's why the chapter is put here. <laughs> he smiled, smiled upon the arts and they flourished. The sciences improved beneath the culture of his hand. With the learned and ingenuous, he delighted himself. He kindled in their breasts emulation, emulation, mm -hmm. and the glory of his kingdom is exalted by their labors. The spirit of the merchant who extended his commerce. Now, the prophet is our leader. Now, just deal with the degrees of what the scriptures say that a magistrate is supposed to do. I'm going to use the prophet as, a, as the magistrate I'm talking about. Praise During Praise his Allah. reign in the flesh, he was a Moorish magistrate. So, 
everything that we read here on what a magistrate is supposed to be and what he's supposed to do, he the prophet did it. He all up in the scriptures. <laughs> but I'm only saying that because Anyone who claimed to fulfill his shoes after he left should be held by the same principles. You can't claim to hold that seat he held, but don't want to fulfill these obligations. That's when the members are supposed to challenge him. That's when the members are supposed to challenge him. Like, hey, look, this individual is not just. You got a magistrate of your individual temple, and we're supposed to have a grand body. And the grand body is supposed to consist a, a supreme grand magistrate, or what they were referred to as a grand sheep. That's over all of the grand sheets, chain of command. That's proper government. That's how it works. Just like the president is over all the governors in the ETC. So whoever is claiming to be the successor of the prophet, and this day should be held to these principles. Nowadays you have several of them that's claiming that position. So it's process of elimination now. It's Let's step to all of them and say, look, this is what you're supposed to be doing. If, if you're saying you're a ruler over myself, then this is what I expect from you. This is my will, my interest. Let's see if you can be compatible with that. If you can't, then we have to consider somebody else. That's lawful. Mm -hmm. That has nothing to do with feelings, emotions, or you not right. That's law. Checks and balances. That's law. When you start going out of it, you know, he's a good guy and everything. He means well. Once you go there with it, then you're not going to court a Moore's code either. Mm -hmm. And that's what too many people have been doing. Mm -hmm. Friends is made by flattery. Not by truth. The people don't want the truth. The truth is too stern. Mm -hmm. That's why you don't have more order properly the way it needs to be because truth is too stern and they don't want it. They don't want to be held to the principles. So they'd rather elect a grand sheep that's going to wink at their wrongdoing. <laughs> it's wrong. It's wrong. They'd rather have a grand sheep that really, you know, is understandable. You know, he don't rock the boat, so I don't have to rock the boat. He don't get involved in government, so I don't have to get involved in government. So they'd rather go meet with him, because then they can say, well, we don't hold no obligation to the mother moors over there. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not more stuff they talk about. Prophet didn't do that. Mm -hmm. You see how people are able to change their movement now? Mm -hmm. They just link up with whoever's doing what they want to do. You know, if that temple over there want to go to Atlantic City every week and gamble, mm. other temples say that that's against the law. If that's what you want to do, what you can do? Go join that temple over there. And then all you got to say is, well, we don't deal with that temple over there. That's not the prophet temple anyway. Prophet didn't set that one up. Mm. I'm just giving you a scenario of what's been going on. And it's sad because people call from all over the world already knowing these issues and asking questions. So you can't hide this. It's not like, even though we don't really want to talk about this, we want to move on, but people are in, in different parts of the world know that something's not right and they're questioning these issues. You, you have to address it somehow. Well, why are we not in a proper body? Why we don't have one grand body? What, what body is this? What body, you know, people challenging me on what body? You got to know how to deal with these issues. It's sad that we have to talk about it, but, you know, be technical, I'm tired of it. It's not. It's slow. And, and it needs to be told just like it is. I mean, we've been telling it. It's not like this is the first time we, we're saying it, but, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to keep doing it. And we're going to remind them that we're not letting up. And really, the, the, the mission I'm on now is if you want to, if you want the job, I'm not going to dispute your job. If you want to be the leader, that's fine. I have a whole list of things that you should address. 
And I'm going to make sure that the people know that you're supposed to address them. Yes, no. And when people keep calling from all over the country and the world, I'm going to start directing them right to you. <laughs> I'm going to give them your phone number, your mailing address, and I'm going to start sending them there and let you deal with these issues. And then when you can't answer it, then they're going to not want to deal with you. So they're going to, you know, make you recuse yourself by default. So keep, you know, keep wanting that job. I know I definitely don't want the job. I'm still learning myself. I didn't figure this stuff out. But the problem is, you know, people will say, well, you know, y'all on to yourself? No, we're not on to ourselves. We have enough of a track record to, to, to show that we link up with any group of Moors that's trying to do anything good. Yes, ma'am. So, so we're not being on to ourselves. The problem is, if you want to be a representative over, over us, then you're going to have to deal with the affairs of us. If you're willing to deal with that, then we can sit down and talk. If you're not ready and don't want to address that, then don't start saying that we need to be under you. Islam. 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 Rise in the spirit of Allah, the prophet, Islam is the prophet of Jerusalem, Islam is the more science temple, everyone in attendance. Islam. And I also apologize for being late also. Islam. 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 Um, one statement, one question. Mm -hmm. First, um, just real quick, what you're speaking on now, um, especially online, you know, a lot of, do a lot of conversation online with a lot of moors out there, you know, mm -hmm. and definitely come across that where you have a lot of moors that, uh, that like to debate. Uh, who who's approved to do what what a, what temples affiliated with who and mm -hmm. been approved and, and 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 everything of that nature and in the meantime no one no one wants to sit there and talk about unifying and, and dealing with unity and, and setting up a one you know at one at one grand body one court so everybody wants to sit there and debate mm -hmm. and challenge who's who said this and who said that and right. you know and, and I, I I look at it as like there's a certain, it's not a lot, but it's a small number of brothers out there that's doing a disservice to the movement mm -hmm. that it causes confusion for for uh, moors that are just coming in mm -hmm. or people that are on the fence thinking about coming in or people that never even heard about it before. Mm -hmm. When they see that, you know, it starts throwing up red flags, mm -hmm. you know, it basically causes confusion. Mm -hmm. You know, so I just wanted to say that. But the, um, the other question I had was uh, what you were talking about earlier. Um, I was in Philly uh, the other morning and mm -hmm. talking to uh, Moore Shiloh there. And she had this book called uh, Little Unknown Facts About the uh, United States of America. Mm -hmm. And in that book, they, they were, um, you know, they were talking, they talked about John Hanson. Mm -hmm. But in particular, I'm going to talk about George Washington, mm -hmm. who was the uh, first president of the United States of America after the Articles of Confederation of Congress. Mm -hmm. In his first term, after his first term, he didn't want to run anymore. For some reason, I don't know. I don't know if he saw the what certain things that was being done, and the course that they were trying to take it between you know, certain states. But back then, a lot of states had a lot of power, mm -hmm. and they he was convinced to to uh, to to basically take on a second term as president of the United States of America. Mm -hmm. And they said in his inaugural address, he gave the shortest he gave the shortest inaugural address on record in history. It mm -hmm. was like 144 words. But uh, one of his statements that he made, uh, I believe he either made a statement when he left, when he was leaving office, that one, of the, one of the things he did do when it, it was a big issue with dealing with slavery, mm -hmm. that, you know, uh, via the Declaration of Independence, all men were created uh, free and equal. So they knew that everyone was supposed to be free, even the so-called slaves. Mm -hmm. You know, they also tried to say, you know, George Washington held slaves but one thing he did do when he when he passed on was he freed you know all his people that he had in bondage. But the one statement that he said that about about the government, not the not the not the spiritual forms. You said you know the more scientific you have the the it's only one temple, the spiritual form of the temple, mm -hmm. and then you have the physical form of the temple. Mm -hmm. And it was a statement that I noticed that he said speaking on the physical form of the government of the United States of America. Okay. And he said that, and I, I want I want you to um, so if you can elaborate on the statement that he said, kind of how it relates to what the prophet set up in the beginning and how you and how when he passed and 
supposed to, uh, after he passed, how you have people have undermining the movement mm -hmm. and the temple of, of the direction that it was headed. Mm -hmm. So George Washington stated that government is not reason. It is not eloquence. It is a force, like fire. It is a dangerous servant, a fearful master. Never for a moment should it be left to irresponsible action. Mm -hmm. And that's something that George Washington stated when he was leaving uh, after his second term, you know, so it, this thing right here is, is, is to his warning, is give, basically giving a warning to to everyone that's going to come after that left to irresponsible hands, you know, it can take a dangerous course, mm -hmm. you know, like like fire, you know, mm -hmm. fire and water, fire and water is the tool of like some of the most dangerous elements on the earth, mm -hmm. you know. So I just want, if you can elaborate on that statement, if you want me to read it again, but if you can elaborate kind of show to clarity how even even not even the Morris Science Temple mm -hmm. and how that was guided guided but even dealing with the United States of America in the beginning how what they set up in the beginning is not what's going on in the present day Today. right now. Yes. Yeah, well, uh, so. um, let's start from the Free National Republic of the United States of America. <coughs> Remember Back in the early part of the Confederacy, uh, even dealing with the Continental Congress, no one wanted the job. Mm -hmm. And this is how Brother John Hansen became president in the first place. It's because no one wanted the job mm -hmm. at that particular time. So he basically volunteered. And it's because of the different malicious acts that were going on by the state's representatives and what they didn't want to agree to and what they did agree to. That anyone who took that position would have been forced to go along with the program. So sincerely, no one really wanted to take part in that. There was a lot of confusion and a lot of war going on at that time. And he fought to keep the Union alive. The first Union. Now, government is founded on basic principles as far as, you know, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, but, you know, first, e equality, you know, equity, truth, justice, you know, things of that nature. And no one really wants to go by those particular principles. Mm -hmm. And even like the prophet was saying in, in the divine warning, how since the Constitution, since 1774, declared all men equal and free. Since that constitution has never been changed, there's no need for anything else. Mm -hmm. and, and that really further substantiates what he said in that article. Mm -hmm. Because <clears throat> Washington didn't come in until 1787, but he was involved in government because he, he was a general. Mm -hmm. You know, so the principles of where this nation was supposed to go was already founded was already in writing. The problem was the representatives of the states didn't want to go according to those laws. So you had states not agreeing with states, disagreeing with states. You had people battling over those issues where some might have wanted to follow, but others didn't want to follow. So it was hard to keep a union together when you had different people want to do, this, do different things. There was no unity. And no one acknowledged supreme power that can regulate everybody else. Like right now you have a federal government, or what they call a centralized government. Before you didn't have that. And that's one of the things that they did, was they put the centralized government together to actually put checks and balances on the rest of the states. Now it's still not running right. Yes, thank you. It's still not running right. Although they may have unity in one centralized government, they're still not going according to the law. Technically, 1774, it was already more code and law established prior to that. That really sets the tone 
So you didn't even need that. Even if you go back to the Iroquois laws, you know, which is only dealing with a certain era of time as well, that was still founded on principles of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Nowadays, you don't have that, even though it is in writing. And they might say that they've taken an oath to uphold it. It is not the standard anymore. You follow what I'm saying? What you already know. You know, relating to the Moore Science Temple is the same thing. Obama is in the same position as where Obama was, I mean, as where Washington was at. The standard in the law on what he's supposed to do is one thing, but it's not the standard by those who he has to answer to. And George Washington knew that, that even though he was the president, he had to answer to certain powers to be. And it's, it's the same thing, it's all, and it's going right back to what I'm saying about the Moore Science Temple and with the grand body and with the Moore Science, you know, people are giving charters to set up Moore Science Temples of America, but they being set up and being told that they can't teach certain things or they can't follow certain things. And that causes this disturbance to individuals where they don't want to take on the position of being a more science temple because they know sincerely that certain things is not, not right. And they're not just going to go along to get along. Mm -hmm. And that's our position. That most of the people just didn't accept the charter because they knew it under how it was given to them, their leaders wasn't going to enforce the true standard. Where we took the charter and reconstructed the charter and did what we felt was supposed to be done with it and to challenge. Same thing Hanson and different people did, even Abraham Lincoln. Take, take in charge even you knowing you're going to rock the boat where people are going to disagree with you and they're going to come at you and try to tear it down. They did it to Lincoln. They did it to Hanson. They did it to Prophet Nova Joe Ali. They do it to us and they're going to do it to anybody else who holds that position of following the Prophet. And like, like you said in the letter, government is a powerful position. Very powerful. And when you're dealing with finance and money, I mean, it's very powerful. And people are going to try to control where the power is at. And the power is in the seat. It's not necessarily the more science temple itself is where the power is at. The power is in the seat. Mm -hmm. So the ones who control the seats control the power. So people are fighting each other over the seat itself. Because once they establish jurisdiction over the seat, then they control the power, the finances, the people, and they dictate which way the movement should be geared to. And this is what they have done for many generations. And now it's out of hand because you got many people like us that's willing to stand up and run a more science temple not under how it's been traditionally ran. So the people who have been running it wrongfully is saying that the other people are not lawfully more science temples. But they're no more than, than right or they're just as wrong as the as anybody else that's running the more science temple not under the proper proper, proper authority. So it's neutralized. Neutralized within the bulk claims, not towards the prophet. Is it's not just towards the prophet's movement, but it's neutralized, meaning that if you've been holding this seat for 30 years and you have not been following the prophet's true intentions, then you have no right and authority to charge anyone else of not following the prophet. That's what I mean. We let people get away with this. Doesn't mean we're right either. We can't be right until the whole is right. I, I'm the first to admit that. 
everything you see here is not how it's supposed to be. So we would never lead nobody on and say, okay, well, we are perfect or 100%. This is where you need to be or this is exactly how the prophet set it up. I'm not saying that at all. Never said that. But until we form a national consensus of the seats of government and agree to it the way it should be done, then we're going to continue to function the way we feel is fit for the redemption of our people. We're certainly not going to put them under the hands of the oppression. oppression. We will be wrong to put people under the iron hand oppression. Then we'll be putting you back in slavery. It's love. it's love. Speaking about power, the prophet said if you have race pride and love your race, join the more assigned to America and become part of the divine movement. But then you have power to redeem your race. And if you're speaking about power, it's an illusion. Mm -hmm. It's a force that must be directed by will. Whose will? Holy breath. It must be directed by truth, which is, with his breath, his holy breath. So are you saying because of his power, when they came in, when they joined the more assigned to America and became a part of the divine movement? When they realized the power that they, they had, was that the problem? Because remember, it's an illusion. It must be directed by holy breath. And that's be that's talk to your two selves higher and lower yourself, in your lower self. So is it is it because was the power distorted because the people didn't truly have an understanding of what their higher and lower self was? True. Stop there, true. Because if man knows he must be that what he knows. So if man really knows this movement. And if man really knew or understood Prophet Noah Ali, they would fall in line. No. So it will be no insidious plan. So. They wouldn't move based on the so-called power, like you said, which is an illusion. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't really move and try to undermine that. They would just get in where they fit in and do what they need to be done, what so. needs to be done. Like Millie Ill, that's one of the reasons why Supreme Grand Sheik uh, Millie Ill uh, became uh, the Supreme Grand Sheik is because he didn't gravitate or strive to come into that position. The Prophet called him into his office prior to him leaving the form and told him that he needs him to quit his job, his day job. I have the letter. He asked Millie Ill to quit his day job. He says, I don't have a salary for you at this time, but you will be rewarded. And I can at least make sure that your rent is paid. He says, but a mighty work is yours, and I, you know, I need you to sit in my seat when I'm not here. So he called Milieu, Mil was working. He was assisting the prophet. Don't get me wrong. He was assisting him just like you assisting Grand Sheik and everybody doing. The prophet called him in and said, I need you to quit your job and run this movement. There's certain people that I don't trust, you know, and, and I will, uh, according to the work I've seen, Millie Ill wasn't the most qualified far as, uh, you know, scientific perspective. He wasn't the most qualified to run the movement, he was loyal. but he was the most loyal. He was loyal. So, yes, so. The prophet trusted him, that's and right. that's why the prophet put the hand to put the power in his hand, because right. so. he trusted him. So. That's right. And we put our trust upon names and issues from our forefathers. So it's not all the time about how much you know or how well you can demonstrate, but it's, it's by how well you you're able to honor your position I'm doing that. So. and the record says a man's honor is his fidelity mm -hmm. a man's honor That's is right. his fidelity and this takes us back to magistrate and subject mm -hmm. because the prophet also tells us in order to be a good leader you must first be a good follower Master and servant and you got a lot of leaders out here a lot of chiefs they never follow and never wanted to follow from the door they came out discrediting the prophet. So. And they told people, don't follow the prophet, follow what I'm doing. They never even went through the steps of 
of following. You follow what I'm saying? They just skipped all of these, and then the people don't know. That's why you must read your literature. Because if a person just skipped that, if you never really seen them in chain of command, and you just automatically come follow them, then you setting yourself up. This is why, regardless of what our position, the prophet is always going to be chain of command. As soon as we put ourselves over the prophet, then that shows ignorance. It shows ignorance. People say, well, y'all you know, worshiping the prophet and this and that. No, we're not. We're giving honor uh, to the prophets. Uh, what you should do the same. Because he has done things that we still have not yet done, and we're still trying to figure out how it was done. Just like we give honor to, to our forefathers who built the pyramids. <laughs> Guess what? I bet you right now we can't build a pyramid. <laughs> I'm not, I don't mean to put the limitation on us. We can. We, we can do it. But it would take us a while to figure it out. After we finish arguing and I'll figuring out who's we're going to do this and who's going to do that, where we're going to get the stuff from, okay. if we got enough finances to even get the material. Where we're going to put it. Yeah, where we're going to put it, who's the land. <laughs> Is it free land? Who's going to follow D for it, if you follow what I'm saying? So we'll be arguing all day about issues, you know, when scientists still haven't figured out how the pyramids was built. That's my whole, yeah. my whole thing. So with the resources that they exactly. Had. So it's to sit here and, and same thing with the prophet. People still figuring out how the prophet did some things he did. Mm -hmm. You know, and and until you know somebody has perfected that and can duplicate it and take it further. Then you can't be talking about well, don't follow the prophet, follow me. Mm -hmm. That that doesn't make any sense. No man in the world is black or white the same. You can't tell them. You don't have a clue on how something was done, but you want me to follow your method and don't even consider the one that you drafted. Mm -hmm. And that's what you have out here. Interpretation. Islam. 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 Love. That's going to end today's lesson. Love. Slow. Slow. We have someone who can take a collection in order to act three. So the Saheru. Glad to have you in the meeting. Slow. Slow. I think who you say. Act 3. This law is the divine duty of every good member. If he is able to finance the aid and save his nation, and if he does not, he is an enemy to the cause of uplifting his own people. And justice must catch him. Let it be he or she according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. As I have the power to invest in my hands, and I will have to enforce the law in order to save the nation. It's that is time for donation. It's it's time. Time. It is time to donate. It's love. There's now more announcements. Yeah. Once again, we gave you. What's this? She can make it. What's it then? You have an announcement? Yes. What's wrong? Um, okay, announcement is we all know that January 8th is going to come around again. Um, so if you want to put up your donations now early, you can. <laughs> No need to wait till the last minute. We can go ahead and get our expenses and things paid for mm -hmm. early mm -hmm. and plan early. Um, so we are taking collections for donations for the profit so I return. Yes, Rand. So the Rand is taking donations for the business. <laughs> <laughs> and we are decide Not where yet. Gonna be at? No, we oh. haven't had a, our meeting yet. Um, I would like to go to Chicago. Well, what we are going to do is the, the Moorish American Day Parade is coming up, uh, I believe, this spring in Chicago. So we're going to be, that's probably going to be our next bus ride. We're also doing a trip to the um, George Washington uh, Memorial Masonic Museum. Nice. Uh, we're going to put a bus tri trip going there. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have the dates for that yet, but we are taking uh, the bus fund up.
But whichever one we're going to do, those funds are just go to that first. What's mm -hmm. not Chicago? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. As long as I know. Um, <laughs> just was also was given, um, <laughs> also <laughs> given <laughs> honors again to our, our Capricorns. As long as uh, over the past couple of days, Brother Ramsey L. Bay is here. Um, um, Brother Chris. Assistant Grand Chief Clifford yeah. Jefferson L. Bay. And Prophet Noble Jolie. And Prophet Noble Jolie. <laughs> uh, also, <laughs> Brother Divine L. Bay. Brother Divine. Brother Divine. Islam to you, brother. I know you watching. Peace Islam. Um, Islam. And there's other Capricorns out there as well. Mm -hmm. Islam giving honors to all the Capricorns in their evolution <laughs> towards the sun. I'm doing a lot. I'm honest to my father. Islam. 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 Mm -hmm. Islam. So I uh, bring up Sheikah's Nika to close out the rest of the meeting, please. Islam. Islam. Additional laws for the Marsh Americans by the Prophet Noble Jurali, Act One. Grand Sheikhs and governors are heads of all temples, all businesses. Each said temple must be approved by the Prophet Noble Jurali. Before acting upon by any members, let it be finance, property, or any line of life that will cause the members to sacrifice finance, ETC, that will cause the support of any group of members. Any former officer that violates these laws is subject to be removed from his office under heavy restriction, ETC, by the Prophet or the Grand Sheikh. Act 2. All members are to attend at meetings and in public meetings properly. If a member is found standing around on the meeting period, shall be fined 50 cents in the first case, and on the second, he will be fined one dollar, which will go in the emergency fund. If members working, his monthly dues must be paid, and if he has money in the bank, he must subscribe as, as much as he is able to the Moorish Uplifting Fund because it takes finance to uplift the nation. Act three. It is the lawful and divine duty of every good member if he is able to finance to aid me in saving the nation. And if he does not, he is an enemy to the cause of uplifting his own people and justice must touch you. Let it be he or she, according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, as I have the power invested in my hands, and I will have to enforce the law in order to save the nation. Act 4. All members, while out making a public speech, must not use any assertion against the American flag or speak radical against the church or any member of any organized group because we are to, to teach love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Yes. Act 5. All members must promptly attend meetings and send their children to Sunday school. And the teacher must confirm himself to the questionnaire and that every member exercises five senses who is able to do so because out from your Sunday school comes the guidance of the nation. Act 6 and Act 7 has been read an opening of the meeting, so we give honor to those acts as well. Islam. Islam. The four sons and daughters of the Asian nation of North America need to learn to love instead of hate. Islam. 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 You know yourself and your father got a law that you may learn to love instead of hate. Every man needs to worship on his own line of victory the United Asia. Islam. The Islam. The is not close. Islam. 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 Yeah, more right. eat eats in the back. Food right. for the soul. Right. Put all my stuff on right now. Have you three days, bro? Oh. Shaky. Oh. 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 I'll take the fun, man. Eh?
Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for watching. What you got, your own emergency <laughs> fund going on over there? Ain't the boy has freedom today. Thank you, boy. Thank you, boy. I'm losing my freedom, brother. Birthright, man. What's your birthright? You need help from that? I'm sure you'll get there. Get somewhere. Uh, 22. Nothing. Uh, It'll be a hundred by the morning. You was already there. You ever dance in front of the camera? Nah, but I'm good. Yes, you do. I bought a truck too. Close call, yeah, that's it, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Almost <laughs> hit. You got a letter on it? Huh? No. You got a letter on it, man? No, I didn't see that. Oh, I got a little bit of it. It ain't all the way. Huh? It ain't all the way. All, all yeah, finished yet. Yeah, hey, Chris. It's there. They pulled me over for not having no letter in on Chris, my car. On your car? No, my Chris. On my white van? Chris, yeah. Come here, my boy's van? No, I'm on. Yeah, I mean, the <laughs> What you got? You got to put it on there, man. Commercial tab. Yeah. 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 Commercial tab. Yeah. 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 All my stuff commercial. Yeah. They pulled me over. I had to go to court now. Yeah. 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 I watched the I watched the online uh, Friday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Come back from Trenton late. But I seen what I heard what you were saying. You know who did mine? Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Live T-shirts. Mm-hmm. He did. He did. Yeah. He work with you, son. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, don't pay those 300 for those Europeans like that. No, nah, I use, um, no, nah, I don't pay that much. Yes, I use right. it doing myself. I got a place where I get them printed. I, I, all my trucks and stuff, I've done that myself. Oh, it's too cold right now. Well, it might still be, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It might be feasible for you to just let them print it out and you do the work. Where they, where they at? Now? Here in West End. Uh-huh. On Brighton Avenue. Uh-huh. 108. They got the machine right here. Do like Everything right there. The other trip. And you see the work that they do do. It's like they can do anything. Yo. <laughs> they can do that magnet strip too. They can do that magnet. They do flyers. Do everything. Yeah, I need some business cards. Yeah, yeah, they gave them a free commercial. Hey, the more of a for me, man. What I'm paying for this, man. It's like, I'm saving a hundred dollars less with them Europeans. <laughs> And look, the price I would have got, they wanted 